Good morning. For the next two devotions, we are looking at Paul's prayers for the church at Thessalonica, a city which is still there and now in northern Greece. We obtain a background of the letters to the Thessalonians from Acts chapter 17, where we get an insight into the events that took place there. Having left Philippi with all its troubles, we see that Paul had three occasions to speak at the synagogue, and in that time, some came to faith, but others formed a mob and drove Paul away. It's not surprising then that Paul is concerned for the young believers he had left behind. Paul has been very concerned for them and uses such strident language as he writes to them. Chapter 2, verse 17, we see, Brothers, when we were torn away from you, out of our intense longing, we made every effort to see you. So Paul writes to them with such gratitude to God as he hears the good news from Timothy that they are standing firm in the faith. And so we pick up the passage from verse 9 of chapter 3. But first, let us pray. Our Father, we thank you for a new day. We thank you that we can come before you and pour out our hearts before you. We can seek you and know that you will hear us because you are a loving Father. Be with us then as we look at this passage. Be with us as we share our thoughts with, with ourselves and perhaps with our partners, our loved ones. But Lord, most of all, we thank you that we can share it with you and that you can instruct us and guide us for the future. So Lord, thank you. Uh, we just praise you in Jesus' name. Amen. So chapter 3, verses 9 to 13. How can we thank God enough for you in return for all the joy we have in the presence of our God because of you? Night and day we pray most earnestly that we may see you again and supply what is lacking in your faith. Now may our God and Father himself and our Lord Jesus clear the way for us to come to you. <clears throat> may the Lord make your love increase and overflow for each other and for everyone else, just as ours does for you. May he strengthen your hearts so that you will be blameless and holy in the presence of our God and Father when the Lord Jesus comes with all his holy ones. Paul begins in verse 9 with thanksgiving to God. Paul's heart is joyful over the news he has received. They remain faithful. In verse 10, Paul contends that he prays for the church there throughout the day for the opportunity to return to them. When he says we pray that we may see you again, it has special resonance for us in these dark days. That we've been facing. It does make the scriptures come to life so much more when we grasp and feel more of the implications. Remember, Paul had no FaceTime or Zoom to connect him. It was either snail mail letters or personal visits. And he prays that he can supply what is lacking in their faith. He had been torn away before he could share the full counsel of God. And we see from elsewhere in the letters the areas that this might include. The nature of the second coming of the Lord Jesus Christ, how to develop their sanctification, and the need to work and not be lazy, for examples. In verse 11, we see Paul makes his request to God for a clear path to return to the city. And it looks from Acts chapter 20, verse 1, as though Paul's prayer request was granted to him. But we can see from the way that Paul prays that he is dependent on the grace of God for his request to be fulfilled. This is reminiscent 
of James in chapter 4, verse 15, when he says, Instead, you ought to say, if it is the Lord's will, we will li live and we will do this and that. That does seem an important message for us to grasp as believers. <clears throat> and then Paul tells them that he is praying specifically for them in that verse 12. May the Lord make your love increase and overflow for each other and for everyone else, just as ours does for you. This love is the agape love for which Paul writes, unconditional love for all those around them. What an array, amazing request Paul makes, that agape love will flow and overflow to all men. Then Paul concludes the prayer with verse 13, for their ongoing sanctification, ready for the return of the Lord Jesus in glory. Paul wants them to know what will happen when the Lord returns and outlines this in chapter four. There we are. Paul's desire is for this church to abound in love and holiness. And surely this is something we would echo in our prayers for one another. So let us do that right now. Heavenly Father, we are touched by Paul's words. His desire for these believers, very young in the faith, to know something special from you, that their faith will hold in the face of opposition. Father, we want this for us too, that our love and holiness may indeed abound as individuals and as a body of believers who form the church that we are. Lord, we seek you over this and pray that it will be true, that we'll be able to say these things of ourselves, that our love does abound for one another. Thank you, Lord. Amen. And just as we finish, I wondered if you might undertake a little task before our next time together. I found a helpful suggestion in a book entitled Bible Study Methods by Rick Warren. The suggestion is that you take a portion of scripture and emphasise each word one at a time to see what that brings out in the meaning and meditate upon it. So why not try this portion of verse 12? May the Lord make your love increase. And so, may the Lord make your love increase. May the Lord make your love increase. May the Lord make your love increase. And so on through the clause together. So, see how you get on and we can check it out at our next session together. Have a good day. <laughs>